Paracentesis is an important basic skill for a medical practitioner to be familiar with. In the U.S., alcoholic liver disease is the most common cause of ascites. Other common causes include infection, malignancy, congestive heart failure, and nephrotic syndrome. This video will demonstrate proper conduct of abdominal paracentesis as described in the ACS-ASE Medical Student Simulation-Based Surgical Skills Curriculum. At the end of this video, each student should be able to list the indications and contraindications for abdominal paracentesis, demonstrate the preparation and performance of an abdominal paracentesis, and identify the common complications of an abdominal paracentesis. Abdominal paracentesis is a medical procedure that can be both diagnostic and therapeutic. During abdominal paracentesis, a needle is inserted into the peritoneal cavity either to obtain a small sample of fluid for testing or to drain large volumes of fluid to alleviate the symptoms associated with fluid accumulation, such as abdominal discomfort, dyspnea, dyspepsia, among others. Common indications for paracentesis include new onset ascites, management of diuretic resistant ascites, management of tense ascites, clinical deterioration of a patient with established ascites, such as a patient now presenting with fever, abdominal pain or tenderness, hepatic encephalopathy, acidosis, or GI bleeding. Students should be familiar with proper technique of anesthesia and preparation of a sterile field, gowning and gloving, paracentesis tray equipment such as scalpels, syringes, catheters, and a fluid drainage system, the anatomy of the abdominal wall, risks, benefits, complications, and alternatives with respect to informed consent. Ensure that all necessary supplies are at hand. Obtain informed consent and indicate complications and contraindications. Possible complications include viscous organ perforation, infection, bleeding, fluid and electrolyte imbalance, leakage of acidic fluid, and renal failure. Absolute contraindications include acute abdomen. Relative contraindications include thrombocytopenia. If thrombocytopenic, administer platelets prior to the procedure. Coagulopathy. If coagulopathic, administer fresh frozen plasma prior to the procedure. Pregnancy, significant intra-abdominal adhesions, and dilated bowel. Position the patient supine with the head slightly elevated. Decide on an appropriate insertion site either at midline, two centimeters below the umbilicus, or in the right or left lower quadrant. If going below the umbilicus, ensure that the bladder is empty to prevent accidental perforation. Mark the insertion site with a marking pen. Don sterile gloves, gown, and mask. Prep and drape the patient. Anesthetize the skin and subcutaneous tissue with 1% lidocaine. Be sure to pull back on the plunger to ensure you reach parietal peritoneum, but do not pierce any vessels. Make a small puncture at the site of insertion with an 18 gauge needle or 11 blade scalpel.
while pulling back on the plunger, advance the needle in small 2 to 3 centimeter increments. Once in the peritoneal cavity, carefully withdraw the needle while keeping the catheter in place. Attach a syringe to obtain the required amount of fluid. If a diagnostic sample is needed, place some fluid in a sterile container. To begin draining ascites fluid, connect the catheter to a drainage system. Remove the catheter and apply a sterile occlusive dressing. Some common errors or pitfalls that may occur while performing abdominal paracentesis include not maintaining sterile techniques, inadequate self-protection, inadequate amount of local anesthetic agent, and improper needle insertion technique. This video demonstrated the proper conduct of abdominal paracentesis. Indications and contraindications were also reviewed, as well as complications. Abdominal paracentesis is an important skill to learn. Improper technique can result in complications including patient discomfort, intra-abdominal organ perforation, post-paracentesis bleeding, and infection.